Good morning. Welcome to ITN News. I'm Marsha Nigamage. First, a look at your headlines. A set of proposals for a new constitution presented to the president. Minister Bahinda Maravira says 70% of the electricity demand will be met through renewable energy. China appreciates the support of Sri Lanka during the difficult times. And in news overseas, the U.S. Senate votes to curb President Trump's powers to wage war on Iran. And now the news in detail. A set of proposals to be considered when drafting a new constitution was presented to President Gotabe Rajapaksha. The set of proposals compiled by the Yutukam organization has been named as a strong state, our own constitution. The proposals presented yesterday include rebuilding a decent state, people's franchise for true public representation, ensuring a unitary Sri Lanka, balance of power between the executive, legislature and judiciary, and a society based on duty. The Registrar of Askiri Chapter, Venerable Madhagama Dhammananda, delivered a special Anushasana on the occasion. It has been organized under the patronage of the Chairman of Yutukam Organization, Gemindu Kumara Tunga. Felicitation awards were presented to Dr. Gunadas Amrasekara, President's Counsel, Manohar De Silva, at the ceremony. Minister Mahinda Maravira says the program to meet 70% of the electricity demand through renewable energy by 2030 will be launched soon. The minister said this while attending a workshop which was held under the theme Promoting Renewable Energy. Discussions took place on promoting renewable energy and trends and policies in connection with the renewable energy sector. A group of officials of Indian Expo Organization and the Director General of Sri Lanka Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Asanka S. Rodrigo, were present on the occasion. A silent agitation was held in support of the Chinese people who are fighting the coronavirus. It took place in front of the Chinese embassy in Colombo. The silent agitation has been organized by the Sri Lanka China Friendship Society, Sri Lanka Youth Communist Federation, Lanka Jatika Students Association and People's Forum for Cultural Freedom. The letter supporting the Chinese people was handed over to Chinese Deputy Ambassador Wu Hei. We highly appreciate all the efforts from all Sri Lanka peoples. Although uh, there are different groups in Sri Lanka, you support us in different ways, but no matter in which way, no matter where you are from this island, we all appreciate your efforts and your support to China very much. 17 years ago, we defeated SARS, and this time we can defeat this disease as well, and also develop the economies. And uh, the co economic cooperation between our countries between our two countries, we are not be affected. Don't worry about it. Acting High Commissioner Jacob noted that all India is all set to cross the 100 gigawatt renewable energy capacity mark in 2020. He said India is on course to achieve this ambitious 175 gigawatt clean energy target by 2022. Acting High Commissioner of India, Mr. Vinod K. Jacob, spoke about key milestones achieved by India in the renewable energy sector. He was speaking at the third edition of Renewable Energy Growth Forum, Sri Lanka Chapter, which was held in Colombo. He noted that India has recently completed the commissioning of the largest solar park in the world in Karnataka. Acting High Commissioner Jacob expressed happiness that India and Sri Lanka are founding members of important initiatives such as International Solar Alliance and the IRENA, which focuses on renewables. He recalled that India has also offered $100 million concessional financing for solar projects in Sri Lanka. A complaint has been lodged with the CID in connection with importing vehicles to the value of more than 2 billion rupees during the time of the previous government. The complaint was lodged by JVP parliamentarian Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa. 
It was revealed in Parliament that 78 super luxury vehicles were imported between 8th January 2015 and 30th November 2019. It was found that the highest number of vehicles have been imported by persons who held ministerial portfolios in 2016 and 2017. Some 1.65 billion rupees has been spent on the vehicles of cabinet ministers, 652 million rupees on state ministers, and 564 million rupees on the vehicles of deputy ministers. Information has been received about groups who are pressurizing banks to obtain loans by stating names of the President's secretary and senior government officials. It has been found that they were using the names of pre the President's secretary, Dr. P. B. Jai Sundara, and some senior officials. The President's secretary has emphasized that he has never engaged in such activities. Therefore, he requests the public to inform the police about such fraudsters. And with that, ITN News comes to an end. Have a pleasant day.